Oh God, I sound like a fucking posh twat. <laughs> My name is Liam McDonald, I'm 26 years of age and you may know me for my works of art or being in your local sex club. That's a good question, I don't normally know because I'm hiding in the glory holes, but um, normally uh, lots of conversation, lots of people, uh, lots of sex, uh, saunas, it's nice to go in the sauna, it's a free facial in many ways. I think the idea of walking into uh, a place of the unknown, I, I view it like Narnia. And walking in, I always see different types of uh, people from different types of backgrounds and different types of jobs and how everybody comes together to explore their sexuality and to get creative with one another. I think that idea and that concept is what triggers my way of thinking and that's what makes me want to pick up the charcoal and start drawing. So when I was younger, I grew up in a very small village and I had my first ever gay relationship and it was quite a conservative relationship. And when we broke up, it was quite tragic for me. So I just moved to London. I jumped in the deep end and I went wild and I was exploring gay saunas, gay sex clubs. And then I just became fascinated with it and I haven't stopped going since. They are similar, but if you go to different countries, some have different vibes. Um, so the ones in, in London are quite small and elegant and the ones in Chicago are seven floors and have nightclubs in the middle of them and have different atmospheres. So it all depends on where you go. So I wouldn't necessarily say they're the same, but the same sort of act happens. You have the bar, you have the saunas, you have the glory holes, you have the the maze, the dark room. So they're quite similar, but not. I go to a lot of uh, cruising grounds and a lot of sex clubs. I find myself often now more in cruising grounds than I do in saunas. I like the idea of not knowing who that person is or anything about them. I don't want to know your name or your life story. I just want to get fucked. <laughs> I started to turn my experiences uh, into works of art when I was around 19 because I kept questioning the emotion that I was getting inside of these places and how and why did I feel so alive in these places but in society I'm quite uh, hidden and I try my best not to be seen but when I go to these places I want everybody to look at me and I want everybody to touch me. So I wanted to really capture that in my drawings. So I was 19 when I started to ask these questions and then rather than writing down these answers, I started to draw them. And then that's where my artistry started to happen. Yes, it is. It helps me acknowledge things. It helps me question things. It, allows me to take a break away from things and to to settle down with the certain things that I get myself involved in. It can be quite uh, dramatic and have a, an effect on my mental health. So the drawing is a way of dealing and helping me acknowledge that things are going to be okay and that everybody gets themselves into fun situations. I was looking at artists such as Egon Sheila and Tracy Emin, who uh, used their own life experiences within their drawings. And I started to use pens and pencils and, and paint, and I could never really uh, draw that well until I started to pick up uh, charcoal and the, the fragileness and the, the, the light lines uh, helped me uh, carve the body better. And I just started to build this strength in drawing, so it was the artists that I was looking at and their work that kind of inspired me.
Yeah, it does. And it's good for my pores as well. It's a, I can go to a dermatologist and it's like 60 quid, or I can go to my local sauna for 12 quid and get my pores <laughs> clean and open. But yeah, it does make me horny. A lot of things do. I think regret is quite common at the first uh, stages of going to these places, just because it's the unknown and it's if you're new to it, it can be quite um, shocking at the aftermath. I remember the first time I got fucked by seven guys in one night. It was the aftermath was it hit me really hard, and I and I was kept questioning why was I doing that? Why would I do that? <clears throat> and then I realised it's actually a pretty normal thing, and everyone wants to find out their sexual desires or explore their sexual desires. So I dealt with it by drawing and just meeting people who also go to these places because everybody goes through the same thing and the aftermath is actually really special because it allows you to work out what you like and what you don't like and what you can deal with and what you can't deal with. So it's actually a really good um, process. My art uh, evolves around topics such as heartbreak and sorrow and sexual violation. When I was a lot younger, when I first dived into these sort of places, I had no knowledge of them and I fell down some dodgy traps. I got myself involved in a lot of chemsex, which is using uh, heavy drugs uh, to the point of being paralytic. And it really damaged me and it damaged my life around me. And I wanted to exploit what can happen in these places when you don't have knowledge and when you go to places that don't really care about you as such. There's a lot of places where they just want the money at the door and then whatever happens inside is your own responsibility, which kind of is. But the situations that I got myself in as an 18 year old, I should have never gone through. So I like to um, expose and exploit these, these specific things that can happen because it's un, un, unheard of. People don't want to talk about uh, chem sex. It's seen as this thing where n it's not a thing, or, but it really is. There's a lot of gay men who get themselves involved with taking heavy drugs and then the next minute they, they become addicted and then they can't learn how to, to love or to actually make love with someone without having to use of drugs. So my, my, my works of art is mainly around that and how I tried to get out of it, which I still am. I'm now eight months clean and sober from my reckless behaviour. The public have a quite diverse opinion on my work. I'm seen as this controversial figure just because of a lot of my drawings hold such frankness and honesty that it, some people find it hard to, to take in. So I mention a lot of uh, uh, drug abuse and a lot of rape and a lot of sexual violation that can happen in places that don't really care about you as a person. And a lot of people think I'm trying to go out my way to degrade places like gay saunas, but I'm really not. I'm just trying to highlight that you, things can go bad and things can go wrong. And if you do mix with the wrong people, you probably will have a, a regret later on in life and how important it is to find a place like KV where it's actually safe and friendly and you're actually going to have a great time and not be fucking murdered. I don't know. <laughs> Oh, there's, there's a lot of things I've learned. I've learned to not accept uh, drugs off of people. And I've learned that all ages have sexual desires and it's okay to go and explore. And it's okay to get yourself into things that you wouldn't normally, like threesomes and group sex and fun stuff that happens in gay saunas. I personally would say there's a, a, a huge difference. I would say KV has more of respect for their people 
uh, they're very strict on their rules and regulations and they make sure that you are also where a, a gay sauna is a bit free for all and you're at your own risk there is no safety net whereas kv you have creative people around you you have a community you have people that are really knowledgeable and those that are still learning and it becomes more of this friendship rather than just this place where yeah kind of used and abused and then left there's a huge difference i would personally tell any gay young man that they should go somewhere like uh, KV to explore rather than uh, a gay sauna.